What's going on internet? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication, helping you learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. So let's talk DSPs. DSPs? Dumping strange pianos? Digging silly pickles? No sir, DSPs as in digital signal processors. What is a DSP and how can it help you to make your car audio system sound amazing and full of wonderfulness? Well pull up a chair because I'm about to drop some knowledge on your face. So a DSP, also known as a digital signal processor, connects between your source unit and amplifier. Now the source unit could be your OEM radio, it could be an iPod, it could be an aftermarket head unit, it could even be an eight track player. Does anyone use any of those things still? Anything that can provide a musical signal source. Now that signal comes from the source and it goes through the DSP and then we send that signal to the amplifiers. The key is when the signal is inside the DSP, we can do a number of different things to that signal in order to improve the sound. So if you've been involved with car audio for more than five minutes, you've probably heard about things such as crossovers, equalizers, line output converters. A DSP essentially combines all these different units into one. Let's talk about DSP controls and how we can use them to make a sound system sound amazing. The DSP that I'm gonna be using as an example in this video is the Audison Bit 1. Shout out to Electromedia for providing this device to use on Project Rebuild. The Bit 1 works awesome as a DSP for integrating into an OEM sound system or with an aftermarket head unit. With the Bit 1, we actually have eight channels of input and eight channels of output, but there's also a device called the Bit 10 that is available at a lower price point. It just has less inputs and outputs. Now, one of the first very important things that a DSP device like the Bit 1 allows us to do is time alignment. Something about sound that's important to know is that sound waves actually travel relatively slow through air. Unfortunately, in a vehicle, Vehicle, the speakers are generally at different distances away from our listening position. For instance, in a left-hand drive vehicle that we have here in the United States, the far right front speaker is generally a couple feet further away from the driver than the front left speaker. That difference in distance means that the sound actually arrives later from that right speaker in the driving position. Now we're only talking fractions of a second here, but believe me, you can actually hear this difference. You can hear this because if you're listening to a song that has a vocal track, and the singer is recorded to be right in the center of the sound stage, you're actually gonna hear their voice skewed to one side or the other if you don't have time alignment. This image will not be coming from the center. Now the image is where we perceive a sound to be coming from. And in this case, like I said, it's gonna be skewed one way or another. So what we do with a DSP is we literally bust out a tape measure and we measure the distance from the listening position to each speaker. And then we input those measurements into the DSP software. So what the DSP software then does is it will actually take the speaker that's closest to you and it will delay the sound coming from that speaker so that it matches up with the speaker that's further away. What this does is it makes sure that the sound that we're hearing actually arrives at our ears at the exact same time from each speaker. This vastly improves the center image and it also makes the music just sound much more realistic. If something's meant to sound like it's coming from the left side of the vehicle, you'll hear it from the left side of the vehicle or the right. Now, what else can a DSP do? A DSP can also allow us to control crossovers. Now, generally our speakers are gonna be playing from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. That's the normal human hearing range. Crossovers allow us to limit what range of those frequencies is sent to the different speakers. For example, we only wanna send the high frequencies to our tweeters. We also only wanna send the low bass frequencies to our subwoofers. So what crossovers do is they allow allow each speaker to play the frequencies that they were designed to play. This helps to prevent the speakers from being damaged. For instance, with tweeters, if you send them subwoofer range frequencies, even if it's only a very, very little amount of power, you can blow them almost instantly. Crossovers also allow us to prevent a phenomena that's called beaming. Beaming in layman's terms is when a speaker is playing frequencies that are at the upper end of what it's designed to play. And the sound almost starts to be more focused in a beam type pattern away from the speaker much like a spotlight. By preventing beaming, it makes it so that we're not required to have the speakers facing perfectly directly at our listening position. 
I can go more in depth on beaming in a future video. Now since the DSP gives us the power to control crossovers for each of our speakers, it also gives us the power to control the slope of the crossover or how fast that response rolls off. Now another very helpful feature that's always included with DSPs is equalization and level control. With an equalizer, we can take each individual speaker and we can actually control the output of all these different frequency ranges throughout that speaker's band. Bandwidth. This allows us to tune each speaker individually and we can boost frequencies that are playing too quietly and we can reduce frequencies that are playing too loudly. We do this with the goal of obtaining a smooth target response at the listening position. And by doing this, we hear the music the way it was recorded and the way it was meant to be heard, not the way that your listening environment is impacting it. To perform this task accurately, we use what's called an RTA and I actually recently made a video on that you can check that out down in the video description. Now the DSP also allows us to independently control the level of each speaker. This way, for instance, we can match the output level of the tweeters to the mid-range speakers. This makes it so that one speaker doesn't overpower another and everything sounds the way it's supposed to sound. A DSP is a great way to have full functionality and control over the sound of your system. Now I just wanted to make this video as an intro into the world of sound quality. I plan to go more into detail on time alignment, crossovers, all these different things, and I'll make a playlist of these videos for you guys. So let me know, what else would you guys like to see in a future video? Drop me a comment down below. If you're new here, I love making custom car audio videos and explaining how different things are done and showing you guys some of the different products that can be used. I upload a new video every Monday and you guys can subscribe so that you're notified when a new one is made live. Also, be sure to follow me over on Instagram for updates between these different videos. My username over there is at caraudiofab. Also, a special thanks goes out to Brian, Eddie, Ali, EJ, Rory, Truman, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. These guys make donations per video, which makes it possible for their creation. If you guys would like to learn more about Patreon and how you can support these videos, you can check that out at the link down below. Thank you everyone again for watching. I appreciate all your support. Take care.